Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like repairing a family's home after a water leak, helping pay for a wedding, and surprising a deserving child with a birthday party at the LA Zoo. And during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you, and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, folks. How you doing? It's Danny Tisdale, and you are on. On you're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show, and I hope you are doing great because I'm doing great, and even better, we are going to have a great guest today, and um, you know. Uh, a little bit about food, but it's more about business and all the good stuff that happens with it. And before we even get started, I want you to check us out on Twitter at twitter.com backslash hwmag, also on Facebook at facebook.com hwmag, and also at Harlem World Magazine on Facebook, and of course our website at harlemworldmag.com. And you know, we just want to talk about a few things that's trending on the site. I don't know if you heard, but uh, the 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 headline is awkward. Richard Pryor's son bombed. Can you believe it? I'm using the B word. Bombed at the Apollo. I can't believe it. But you know what? Some things happen early. That's negative. But it may improve the next time he comes to Apollo because you know he's probably got the talent and all that good stuff that his father had. Also, Harlem students, really students from around the nation, uh, are having a walkout and march against gun violence, and it's happening as we speak. And, you know, without further delay, I don't want to waste too much time because I'm excited about uh, our conversation. But, again, check us out. Respond to uh, whatever we talk about at Twitter, also Facebook, at HWMAC, and check us out uh, without further Delay, we have Chef Lawrence Page with us today. Uh, he's a self-taught chef. He is We TV's hustle and soul star. Chef Page is owner of the Brooklyn-based soul food hotspot, Pink Teacup, the Pink Tuck. If I can say it, maybe I, I want the food. But anyway, he is the owner of the hot spot, the pink teacup. He plans to open another hot spot on Washington Avenue in South Florida, and I think that's where he's from. Sometime he's going to do that this uh, winter in 2018. Uh, in Black Enterprise, in an article, he said, I've made millions, lost millions. I've been homeless. Uh, I've lost my life savings behind the pink teacup, trying to become a chef. I didn't realize how tough it was. I wasn't educated about certain ingredients or techniques. I didn't understand any of that. I didn't even watch Food Network, but I didn't give up. Ah, And that's where I wanted to segue. He said he didn't give up. So before we get into this great conversation with Chef Page, the show airs Thursday, March 22nd, on WeTV at 10 p.m. Eastern. Chef Page, how are you doing, man? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, Danny? Thank you for having me. I'm I'm doing good. Uh, I will tell you before we even get started, I'm already licking my lips here trying to get an idea how your food tastes, and I wish we could get uh, 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 Apple or someone to invent something where I can taste food even if I'm not in front of the food and smell it to get this whole experience thing going. But let me stop. Uh, it's, I'm really happy to have you on the show. You know, I'm really curious, Thanks, though. Man. Uh, thank you. Of how you made the transition from working in TV and theater uh, and being a, a self taught chef to being the superstar in food that you are today. How did that, how did that happen? Well, you know, Daniel, I'm, I'm still a director, producer and, and film and um, chef ah. as well. You know, you know, the thing is, is that when you're, you know, you, you know, in, in TV world and, and producing and all that, you constantly, uh, it's like an octopus, you know, you constantly work on many different, you know, arms and things like that. Right. And, you know, one thing that has to move and everything has to happen together. So, 
When 9-11 happened, nobody was financed to produce some television or film. It was a sad situation huh. for the world, you know what I mean? So right. I needed a job. <laughs> so I didn't want to work at 9 to 5, so I told my mother I can't go back to work, and it's taken too long to get a, a, a check from these, you know, distribution companies. So I decided right. to uh, go right. to the uh, culinary uh, game. And little bit I know that was a very, very, very tough, tough, probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, you know, and it's probably, it, and it still is. But um, I just learned the game of food, man. I know, you know, addiction is something that everybody loves, but I didn't realize that my food would be such, you know, a, a major addiction to the world, you know? That's great, and that's a, a and, uh, that's great story. Happened, so I bought myself a job. <laughs> right. Well, I, and it looks like it was a great decision. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I you know, you, when I was reading the, the press uh, in some of your interviews with uh, uh, others, uh, I saw self-taught uh, kept coming up. And how did you manage to, you know, make that transition? Because you were TV and theater, uh, and then there had to be this point where you said food, self-taught, and that had to be a transition on its, in its, on its own. Tell me yeah, a little that bit about hard. that. Yeah, or, that, that was, yeah, that sounds like it was. Yeah, that was very tough. I, I, I remember my chef uh, walking up to me. I was talking to Denzel Washington in the pink teacup at the time, and we're about two two hours into an amazing conversation just about life and great wines and, you know, things of that nature and vineyards. So she says, can I speak to you? So she walks over to me, and she, she says, look, and I, you know, I, I said, this is not a good time to, you know, to disturb me. That's what the general manager's for. And she said, no, I want to talk to you. And I said, excuse me, please. So I said, what's the problem? She says that uh, I, I need more money. I, I'm the one that got this house packed. I said, I just gave you a raise last week and then the month before that. I mean, how many raises are you going to ask for? And she right. said, well, if I don't get a raise today, I'm done. So I said, matter of fact, but, look, but you know, she was my head executive chef. And, wow. you know, I'm sitting there at the table talking to Denzel, nervous, sweating, when I just lost my executive chef. And I was like, damn it, what am I going to do? So my mind is, you know, that, that, as that, that producer, your mind is constantly running while you're watching right. one thing, your mind is on the next thing. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what if they run out of chicken there? What's going to happen now? <laughs> so I got on the phone. I talked to my mother. I said, Mom, I need to learn how to cook. I said, I, I got all these ingredients right here in the kitchen, and I don't even know how to cook them together. <laughs> you know, so, you know, my mom taught me everything. So she said, boy, you can't buy soul. Soul is something that you were born with. So you get your ass in that kitchen and do what I taught you to do. And that was it, you know? So she walked me through wow. every step, and then I just learned the culinary game from there and started educating myself on food and the ingredients, mm. cook times and things of that mm. nature, you know? Right. Well, I, and, and that's a, a good segue uh, because you, I've heard you mention mom twice. So I wanted to ask you who has inspired you to – you know, do the work that you're doing, you know, and on my hit list it says kitchen. But just in general, has it been mom or or was there someone else to kind of inspire you to do the work and uh, really put the confidence in you to, to for you to feel that you could do it? Was that mom or someone else? Yeah, that was mom. Mom, mom is my yeah. biggest fan. She's my biggest, you know, my heart, everything, and you know, growing up you. in the house, or you know, with two brothers and one sister, everybody went to play, and I just stayed in the kitchen. And she would always pass me a silver bowl after making me uh, candy, and they taste that, tell me if it's sweet enough. Stop! And stop! Like, Don't what? start mentioning the food now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I always waited for that. You know, that that silver bowl would come out, so I could taste that. You know, that sweet potato, man, and, and, and that was it. You know, so just constantly, you know, going through life and eating at a lot of different restaurants and trying different chef mm. food and. You know, mm. I was a foodie before I got into it. You know, I'd always dine at amazing restaurants, whether it's, you know, Hollywood or whether it's, you know, Chicago, San Francisco, right. New York. No matter where it is. So, you know, I, I dined at a lot of places, so I knew about quality. You know what I mean? So I wasn't satisfied with a lot of places that I've been throughout my entire life. And I was like, man, I'm mm. not kill this. So next thing you know, I'm just, you know, doing what, you know, what I was born to do, man. And uh, am I correct that you were – born and raised in Florida, and then you moved to Brooklyn to uh, well, buy the well, PT actually, Cup? I, I'm sure there's much more in, in the mix there. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Alabama, 
You know, my mom and oh. dad was in the my, my dad was in the military, so we were, he was based in Tampa, Florida, and Nick Air Force Base. And you oh, know, my mom actually when, when he impregnated when he impregnated my mom, I was somewhere in a ditch by the ditch in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get me all choked up, man? Come on now. So somehow I ended up she ended up giving birth to me in uh, Tampa, Florida, when they was on their way to New York. You know, because he was stationed there, but they were leaving Tampa to come to New York, so I got stuck in Tampa at a, at a damn Air Force base, you know, which is great, but originally a Southern boy from Alabama. Okay. What what part of Alabama? My family's from Alabama. Birmingham. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mine's from Athens. Okay, so th- we we all connected in, in some uh, wonderful, mysterious way. So uh, I I hear you, and if and if you have uh, if you're from Alabama, I'm, I know the food tastes good. So uh, yeah, that's the, the the one stamp right there. Uh, that says a lot. Now, um, I I also you know as I read in the opener, uh, I guess like you said, that it hasn't been a, a, a such a easy transition because uh, in the Black Enterprise interview, you said that you were you you had millions, lost millions, and you were homeless. Were you homeless in Florida or Brooklyn or how Not did New that York. happen? Yeah, in much, New York. Yeah, pretty much New York. You, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you could always go back to your mom's house at the end of the day when you were a grown man, but that's something that we take to do, you know? So, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I had like seven, eight coffee shops, you know what I mean, and I sold them all. And, you know, in, in my early youth, man, around 21, you know, 20, I had my first place and, you know, making all that money. I just started wanting to do what, you know, what I've seen other people, what, what I've seen other entertainers doing, flying private and buying homes all over the place. And, you know, and so I, I saw that. So I wanted what I've seen growing up. So I was like, you know what, I want five bucks. You know, this is my place in house watching Connecticut and seeing how he was living. I was like, you know what, I want to do the same thing. Do the same so thing. I started doing stupid things. And next thing you know, it's like, damn, can I make that back? So, you know, you go broke for three years and nowhere to go. You know, and then you're crashing out on this girl couch, this girl couch. And, you know, I, I lost it all, man. But then I gained it back and then I fucking did it again. Wow. <laughs> so, but you know, there, there must That's when I got God in my life and I started learning better talking to my mom and I was like, you know what, I'm not getting any younger, so let me just stay focused right, right now and now I'm back on my feet, man. So it's another millions again, so it's a beautiful thing, you know. So yeah, uh, I'm always interested in, you know, kind of the process of people's lives. So did that make you after that loss, did it make you more afraid and especially you're getting older or did you kind of have the attitude, you know what, uh, I can put my back against the wall and get my grind on. I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, it did make me more afraid. You know what I mean? Especially after you know after I lost it the second uh, time. You know, you question right. yourself. You look in the mirror and say, "What am I right. stupid?" You know what I mean? So you start questioning the people around you. You question like, it, it, you know, it's not an addiction. I'm not on drugs. You know what I mean? I, I'm, you know, I'm not a drinker. So right, I'm a smart so guy. What What's addicted? going on? You know so. Yeah, so, you know, you're afraid in the beginning, but then you say to yourself, you know what, you know, I'm not afraid that, I, you know, I'm, I know I can do it again. I'm just afraid of, you know, of not being able to find the people that help me build it again because after right. a while it comes, starts saying, you know, you're losing, you're losing. But my main thing that my mother always taught me, you know what I mean, you have to lose in order to get up. So if you keep losing, you just better keep getting back up and learn from your mistakes. So when she always say learn from your mistakes, I have to start really listening because we hear it when, when others talk. They always have right. a hard head talking tossing soft asses, you know what I mean? So when I heard that, I had to really, okay, let me really learn from my mistakes. This is a mistake that I'm getting ready to enter right now. Am I going to do it or not do it? So you start, right. you know, playing things back that you've heard and what you've lost and going through the hard times. You start saying, you know what, wait a minute. I didn't have nothing to eat, and that was a very cold day. I don't want to relive that. <laughs> so you make better decisions uh, going forward. I, I hear you, and, and I can um... – you know, only imagine, you know, being in that situation and uh, I, I uh, you know, 
give you all the props that you deserve for, you know, making the decisions that you've made. And uh, Chef Page, we're going to take a, a quick station ID and let our listeners know they're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show with Danny Tisdale, obviously myself, uh, on Harlem World Magazine, the number one company in the world for all things Harlem since 2003. And without delay, we're hitting right back to Chef Page because I wanted to ask you, Chef Page, uh, how and when did you know that you were on the right track? You know, was did the clouds part and the sun uh, come through and you heard, oh, and you said, oh, I'm on the right track? Did that happen? or? I, it did. I knew I was on the right track when I opened up my first wine bar in Harlem. That's when I knew I was on the right track. And all the <laughs> type of people that came in, I hired a top on my air, and I was like, okay, this feels good. That's uh, when I knew, okay, this is, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I, 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 well, just a little delay there that yeah. went a two. You can okay, hear me, yeah, Chef, that, right? That, okay. I hear you. Yeah, that's what I knew I was on the right track because Harlem embraced me. You know what I mean? I learned a lot about wines and learned a lot about the culture of Harlem. You know, and then from that moment, I just said, let me run hard. You know what I mean? So now that I have a taste of everything in life, there's nothing that can stop me now. So that's when the sun came out, and that's when God said, okay, you're on your way. <laughs> Yeah, and that's uh, that's really good stuff. And I, I didn't know about the Harlem history there. That's e- that's even, of course, better. Uh, but you know, Chef, we have uh, uh, you know, obviously, the predominantly uh, our listeners are in Harlem, but you know, the United States and also around the world. And there'll be some folks who won't be able to obviously uh, 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 come to the restaurant yet. Uh, do you have any recipes that? Uh, we can share, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, through our podcast or we can post later um, from your fantastic menu? You know, I, 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 did, a, I, I did an ingredient. I did a recipe of uh, mac and cheese, and it was on, uh, oh. I believe they did it on, what do you call it? Uh, you know, I had over like a million views or something like that. It'll, it'll, it'll come to me, but I actually put the ingredient recipe on there, so you can actually. It'll come to me in a second. So was that on Instagram or something like that, or and... Facebook or? No, it was Tasty. I did it on Tasty, so you can go to Tasty. Okay. And just put Chef Lawrence Page mac and cheese in, and it'll pop up with the ingredients and the recipes, and it'll show you. Or you can, yeah, Tasty is probably better to go get it until I release the cookbook, which is coming soon. Okay, I, I I was gonna say because with your story, man, cookbook is restaurant first. Cookbook I see coming next, and then there's the movie. You know, especially you homeless yeah. and the the. Are you kidding me? That's the American story. American Dream is so funny that uh, I'm glad that I'm working with We TV with this hustle yeah. soul, even though with all the drama. Right. The thing is, is that. You know, uh, you know, it's good because they actually gave me the opportunity, and they and they saw the story. Not everybody's seen the story. They, you know, you, you know, you right. hear about it. You saw Tyler Perry's story, but you said, "Can that happen again to anyone?" But here I am, you know, you know, raised in pretty much New York and among the hustle every day with everybody, and actually, you know what I mean. Went through so many ups and downs. Not to be a rapper, not to be a basketball player, but to be very successful and no college, straight 12th grade. You know what I mean? And Wow. You know what I mean to achieve that dream and motivate others to have it. I, I, I definitely think that you know I'm happy that I was with the right network. You know what I mean to actually help me show the story and help me develop That's right. it. Besides the drama, because you know girls always want to have drama. <laughs> <laughs> always so. That just comes with the now, territory, I think that's right? One of my biggest weakness. Say that again. <laughs> I say <laughs> the drama kind of uh, comes with the territory. It seems sometimes. The drama comes with the territory, man. The more the more fun and the more successful you're in life, the more problems you got. But they're different kind of problems, you know? Right, right, <laughs> now right, it's right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Woo! It, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to even say anything. I'm just going to let that one rest where it is. And, and yeah, Chef, yeah, you, yeah. Know, uh, <laughs> you know, I, we have parents who are, you know, executives, you know, influencers, decision makers who listen to the show. Uh, and uh, I, I think if I look, remember the numbers, you know, I'm not a, as as young as you. Uh, uh, most, I think there's about 35% of our audience are, you know, mom and dads. And there are probably, you know, some of their sons or daughters who want to 
you know, follow in your footsteps, probably the same kind of parents that, you know, your mom or dad was, what kind of advice would you, you know, give, um, you know, that parent who, you know, wants their son or daughter to grow up and, you know, have the kind of hustle and the kind of soul that you have that you bring to your food? What what advice would you give them? I would tell them to let that child, you know, you know, it, it's what I'm going to going to say is very difficult, and it, it, it's two parts to it, you know. And one of the one of the things is like to let your child follow their dreams. Because mm. I remember telling my mother I want to be a director yeah. and produce, and she said, yeah. like, "Well, you got to get a day job. That's not going to help." So right. I, I went against her. You know what I mean? And I did what I had huh. to do, and it, it hurt me in the beginning. And you know, I had to, you know, she's like, "I told you not to do this." You walked away from the <laughs> job that you had. <laughs> You know what right. I mean? She says, you know, I'm fucking way. my ass to put you through college. You know what I mean? So I, I, I just followed myself, but I wish, you know, she didn't. But it was a different time, you know what I mean? That, yeah. You know, parents back then when I was coming up, they, you know, now I think that, you know, these young kids have the ability, if you know, if it's a great family household, that they should really push that child and help them follow their dream. But that child has right. to always understand, can that dream make money? You know what I mean? It has to be a field. Right where, you know what I mean, you have to understand supply and demand. Don't get into anything just because there's an art, because sometimes art will keep you broke. And that's what, you know, kids have to understand. When they get older, you have to be able to tell them, like, look, I support you 100%, but I need you to have a backup. You know what I mean? Some people say there is no backup, but I think you should always have one, especially the way the economy yeah. is constantly right. changing and the world is constantly changing. Right. So it's not like we used to be years ago. So I think that they should always have two things that they, you know, passionately like. Like, I love to cook, and I love entertainment. You know what I mean? So I'm just Smart. living my dream. You know what I mean? So it's, it's very important that I would tell parents, let them live their dream, but also, you know, tell them, like, look, I'm going to support you, but you're going to do this as well. So we're going to figure out how to balance this. And that's it. That's a real, real good advice. And I remember um, – when I was, I graduated from college, and I said, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm an artist. I'm going right to New York. I don't care how much money I have or don't have, Mom. This is what I'm going to do." And Mom said pretty much what it sounds like your mother said, which is, you know, what's Plan B? How much money do you have, and how much did you plan? And of course, Chef, I just jumped in the car and, and came to New York, uh, and of course everything she said, it played out the way she said. And, you know, uh, I, I guess I've just been lucky because things worked out. And uh, I, I think, you know, what you said is is really, really good advice. And also to say that, you know, I guess that's what moms do is they support you, even though they know that you probably shouldn't go, but you're going to go anyway. And, and I guess that's the way you know, mom's role. And uh, uh, it sounds like a really uh, very supportive mom, like most moms are. And, and uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, folks are listening to, uh, you know, the, the pluses and minuses to, you know, uh, your story and uh, because it's a great story and it will be interesting to see how uh, uh, this all plays out because you, you've got a lot going on because you're also expanding to, Miami, correct? Or yeah, yeah. I'm actually at my restaurant now, as, as we speak, in South Beach. Yeah, uh, we have the Pink Teacup wow. opening actually in April, which is amazing. Uh, Eight thousand square feet. You know, the wow. biggest restaurant I've had in my entire life. Yeah, three thousand square feet patio with fire ponds all over the place. Two bars. It's probably the biggest restaurant in South Beach. You know, so yeah, it's a lot going on here. That's exciting. <laughs> That's exciting. So when I'm sorry, when did? Uh, yeah. Does it actually open officially? Yeah, it opens officially in April, second week in April. It's grand opening. Okay. Okay. So I, I know that that's uh, right around the corner. And um, I just want to let folks know that the show airs March. And if I get it wrong, Sean, please help yeah. me here. Premieres Thursday, uh -huh. March 22nd, We TV at uh 8 p.m. Eastern PM. time, correct? No, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Uh, yeah, I'm 10 sorry. 10 p.m. Eastern. I knew yeah. it was 10 p.m. But and I, I really knew you were listening. Yeah, and and they, <laughs> and they they got to tune into that because Hustle and Soul is this journey with everybody inside of it, you know, which is, you know, just you know, I'm constantly managing different personalities and 
that's what oh, I yeah. to do because a lot of times, you know, a lot of times their parents didn't do it. So now I got to play with it because they work with me. So now if you don't work <laughs> with me, you know, these days you, just, you, these days you just can't tell an employee. You, 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 you got to be able, you have to be able to say, uh, to party, how you feeling? Are you okay? I mean, you know, right. back in the days you didn't have to do that. People go to work and they do what they need to do. If you know you got a good worker nowadays, you know, you're like, oh, you know, just so much drama that comes with people's lives, and you you adopt that, especially you know, to, in today's society, even in corporate America, you know, show me a person who's not on their cell phone at, at their at their desk, you know, or show me a person who's not tuning in and listening <laughs> to the Danny Show, you know what I mean? Listen to your show yeah, at, at, at work. You oh, that's I mean? okay so, though. It's like you. <laughs> that's okay if they can, you know. See the guest and listen to the show. That's okay, right? I, I, maybe I got it wrong. I don't yeah, that, know. That's okay. We're going to allow that. We're going to allow that. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, there's going to be some of our listeners also who want to, you know, stay in contact, not personally with you, but professionally, you know, your Facebook or your Twitter page or, you know, Instagram or your website. Do you have something our readers – listeners can uh yeah, they, stay up with you on yeah they should go to uh facebook the pink teacup it's called the pink teacup p-i-n-k like the color t-e-a-c-u-p teacup pink the pink teacup on facebook also on an instagram also on twitter it's the same handle fantastic and and we're going to post all that uh with the conversation here and you know this is always my last question Chef, what is your uh, – do you have a favorite place in Harlem? You know what? You know, the parks or – I haven't been to Harlem in a minute. I, I haven't been to uh, Harlem in a minute, but my two favorite places was my wine bar that closed called the Virgin Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to love, yeah, I know that place. Yeah, yeah, but, but – yeah, but my – yeah, it was right there at Harlem and Lennox. I think it's something else now, another wine bar. Right. Next. Right. Yeah, but my but my favorite favorite place I like to go to Harlem when I'm going through that way is called Levain. I like to go to Levain Bakery. They have these, you know, the coffee is amazing, and they got these chocolate walnut muffins that I like, you know, and the oatmeal cookies. So we're constantly always I, I, buying stuff there, bags and bags of it. Yeah, well, uh, I, I'm I'm right there with you because uh, uh, I'm a lover of Danish, and I've got a stomach to prove the point. And uh, uh, and the Danish is really good at the at the, uh, the place you mentioned. And chef, I I just want to thank you for being on the show. You've got so many fantastic things going on, and on top of that, you a cool brother, and you are right down to earth. And I wish you the best of luck uh, March twenty second for your show. Uh, and going forward. Thank you for being on the show and taking the time, and uh, good Thank luck you, with man. everything, man. Thank you for having me. Thank I you, wish sir. you the best of luck on your show. Anytime you want me, just let me know, and I'm there. All right. Don't put it out there because I'll come back to you. Come back. I'm ready. I love your audience, man. You have an amazing listeners, and I think your listeners are an important, man, and I like their vibe, you know? I can could, I could feel the All energy, right. man, over this phone right now. Thank, thank, thank you, sir, and I'll send you the check in the mail. I, I love that uh, marketing key. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. All right, Thanks, bye-bye. man. I appreciate it, and good luck with everything. Bye-bye. You got it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, folks, uh, I, I you know love that conversation, and I love that you're listening to the conversation, and I hope you're doing well. Uh, You know, my mouth is watering because I want some of that macaroni and cheese that he mentioned, that recipe. Uh, I'm going to check that out, and we're going to add it to the show and click on that link so you can check it out. And more importantly, check out the show on March 22nd, 10 p.m. I said 8 p.m. last time on WeTV, Thursday, premiering March 22nd, WeTV, at 10 p.m. Eastern. Enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your night, whenever you're listening to this. And uh, go check out the Pink Teacup and uh, taste for yourself and let us know what you like about it. Hit us up, Twitter, Facebook, HarlemWorldMag.com. You know we love you. Take care. Bye-bye.
Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like repairing a family's home after a water leak, helping pay for a wedding, and surprising a deserving child with a birthday party at the LA Zoo. And during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you, and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like repairing a family's home after a water leak, helping pay for a wedding, and surprising a deserving child with a birthday party at the LA Zoo. And during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know.